If there's one word that springs to mind across the 18-minute mini-album Bleak by Dark Mar Nebula, it's probably the word guttural. Guttural in the sense that the sounds you're hearing are often unpleasant when taken in isolation, but they combine together in such a way that it creates something oddly unique and stronger than any individual element. Of course, there's more that can be said about the album across its modest 8-song track listing. The opening track on Bleak, Grain, has an otherworldly quality that sounds as if it was more of an experiment in creating industrial pop music than anything else on the album. Aside from the previously discussed guttural aesthetic, there is a cohesiveness to the audio onslaught you're subjective to, with the rhythm playing with your ears in such a way that you're never quite sure what you're supposed to be latching onto, and yet it provides the closest thing on Bleak to a catchy single worthy release. Conversely, this leads into the more experimental meat of the content on Bleak. Despite the opening tracks offering what could be seen as offensive audio production, there are occasional moments of what could be seen as defensive audio production, particularly on Pit, which marries its ambient melodies and looping electric piano with a more downplayed percussive pattern. Combining the offensive and the defensive is something that Bleak does particularly well, and it's what sets it apart from the myriad artists attempting to revive the industrial music scene. One thing common across all of Bleak is the incredibly compressed production, with synthesizer samples sounding as if they were plucked from their library and run straight through multiple brick wall software compressors. Perhaps I'm wrong here, but the production seems very clean for what's essentially an industrial noise experiment. You would be underselling Bleak by writing it off as such though. Over the halfway point on Phobos, the glitches and drums take a bit of a nosedive where Dark Matter Nebula delves into dull territory, almost as if he was running out of ideas. From this point on though, Bleak enters what I feel is the main reason to get through the album. The following track, Untied, combines the surrealist qualities of the more experimental moments of the first four tracks with an uneasy set of drum loops and patterns that always keep the listener guessing. Here we have the album's strongest qualities, the combination of the offensive and the defensive, working off in perfect harmony to carry the listener to a worthwhile experience. Even when Dark Matter Nebula is trying to shock the listener by upending expectations, it's worth knowing that the more lush and largely unprocessed synths behind the noise in the drums are more often than not what keeps me coming back. Despite the harshness, it's the more softened moments that the listener is likely to remember. Of course, this could be intentional, but I'm not so sure. When I've interacted with Dark Matter Nebula, he seems to feign that a lot of his music came to him by accident and he doesn't really know what he's doing. Not that there's anything wrong with this, but if Bleak is what someone who doesn't know what he's doing can produce, then there's surely a greater expectation placed on the shoulders of his competitors among the underground music scene. Where Bleak often fails, however, is knowing when and how to end a track. Across its eight tracks, I think there are only two that feel as if they are not too long or too short. Really though, this could be intentional, so I can't really hold it against it. Dark Matter Nebula seems to finish Pit before it has a chance to climax, and yet Soul feels as if anything over composed and it runs its course within two and a half minutes. Still, this is a small problem among the production and track listing. Perhaps this was another attempt to shock the listener, it's quite difficult to tell. I mean, I think the strongest moments on Bleak are when the layers of noise are stripped away and there's some contrast provided to the proceedings. Really, I'm probably not the target demographic for Bleak, so these decisions on song length and composition might be over my head. As we get to the tail end of Bleak, Dark Matter Nebula seems to rely more on the surrealist elements of the genre to carry a listener to an uneasy feeling of dread, particularly on Way, which never really gets into a groove. Like early songs on Bleak, the intention seems to be to shock the listener via audio onslaught. By relying heavily on droning and nonsensical drums, I feel the Dark Matter Nebula almost jumps the shark here. Yet yeah, I keep coming back to this album. Nearly all the songs on Bleak I would describe as worth listening to at least a couple of times. I wouldn't really call Bleak a particularly groundbreaking release. Not even close, really. Even when taken into the context of the global pandemic where Bleak was released, there have been technically better industrial releases before and after it. I think what sets Bleak apart from the others is the largely amateurish production that still manages to come across as competent. Not to say that Bleak is a particularly poorly produced album, it's just not a very polished release, particularly considering the vast majority of the sounds are computer generated in some capacity. Common mixing and mastering errors are all over Bleak, from its muddy and clashing low end to its granular and gritty feel in the mid to high end. However, like I said earlier, it comes together stronger than some of its parts. Now that brings us to the question at the end of this review. As a release, is Bleak worth a listen? I would say yes, although your mileage may vary depending on how you feel about noisy music. 
Like other industrial releases in the last 10 years or so, it's almost ironic that the less noisy elements are what makes it interesting by contrasting heavily with the industrial backdrop. Still, I'd recommend you give it a listen or two.